I had a visitor last night. And it wasn't my cat that did this. Something was digging in there. My cat was inside last night. Probably the raccoon that comes and visits. I've got my new meter hooked up. Shows the voltage, the temperature in Celsius, which I need to change. How many amps are coming in, how many watts are coming in. It's in absorption right now, which means the green light is blinking. It's pulsing the current over here. Um, I'm going to remove this meter right now, which will probably change things a little bit on the display. It'll probably give me more current. There's a little bit of loss in the meter. And I don't need it now. And then I can hook up another solar panel. And it's cloudy right now, so out of 400 watts, I'm getting just about 100 watts. Which is sort of pitiful. And if you consider my cooler, it uses 75 watts continuous. And when my laptop is plugged in, it uses 70 watts. 75 watts continuous. This gives you an idea of how little usable energy I actually get in a daylight hour on a partly cloudy day like today. I have a construction zone again. I'm over to using the stuff Dave gave me. Using the wires. I've got my stuff pulled apart. This gives you a better view of what I'm going to do here. My batteries are right outside this access panel and I'm going to build a battery box so they are insulated from outdoors and I can blow hot air from the camper in through there during cold times. I've got my TriStar ripped apart. What I've done, I finally open it up and I put in the temperature sensor gauge and also my battery voltage sense wires which I'm now hooking up and I have put a bigger wire into the solar panels so I've got fatter wire coming from the solar panels into the meter or into the uh, charge controller I am trying to hook up here's my solar panel wires I want to hook up a cutoff switch but the switch I bought has way too large uh, ring terminals and I can't fit this on there so I have to get different ring terminals so anyway, I'm rewiring the whole setup here, and uh, hopefully I'll have it running again soon. And here's my battery bank outside. I have the main plus off so I can do the wiring. This is a lot of wires coming through here. It's a crazy amount of wires. There's my new battery voltage sense wires. And I have to take my temperature sensor and mount it on here as well. I'm going to have to actually get myself a, uh, what am I trying to say, a main bus terminal because this is too small to hold all my wires now. This one here, I can't even screw that nut down all the way on the negative terminal because of all the connections I've got coming out. So now I need a bus bar. And I also have a on-off switch for the batteries that I need to install, but again, I can't find ring terminals that'll fit the switch. Now I'm going to check my fluid levels, which is simple with these batteries. I like this. You turn that lever, and oh yeah, they're topped off. They're very high. These batteries are very easy to deal with. Yep, those are high. That's probably why they're dumping a little bit of fluid. They were probably overfilled at the shop. Those are all good. And everything's good so my batteries are still topped off nicely. I just wanted to make sure because there was some gassing. I want to make sure I maintain my batteries properly. You can see a little bit of fluid here. They were gassing out a little bit. A little bit of... it burped a little. And there's... that's from the other day. So I'll have to get some uh, baking soda out here and clean them off. Well, anyway... It's a lot of wires. But I'm doing it right this time. I'm trying to do this where you can see it. I hope you can. 
trying to put my heat shrink tubing on. Uh, low budget style. I am off the grid so I don't have a nice hot air gun. So I just move a flame over this quickly. Trying to put this heat shrink tubing on here to protect the wires. Wind isn't helping me at all. I have to keep cooling down the lighter. But it's doing the job. Wish the wind wasn't blowing on it. And there we have a protected wire. Got both of the positive wires done. Nice and neat. Big spark coming out of that. Take a look at that job. Not bad. Well, I am surprised that the voltage is showing 14.8. Well, I was just saying 14.9 a minute ago. Um, I'm quite surprised. I wonder if it's just in its that one mode where it gases off the batteries to what's it called? I forgot what it's called but when the voltage is higher occasionally so anyway everything's done now I can close up the hatch pack these wires up so today is all about the batteries now I've got these shrink heat shrink tubing on here protecting my wires that'll help uh, reduce some stress and flexing and also keep moisture out and over here as well. Now I've got a lot of wires coming into here. There's five wires on each terminal. So I definitely need to get a terminal connector that goes clamps on here and has a longer bolt so I can mount these better. But now I gotta figure a way to close this door without I do not want to drill holes in my door. I don't like putting extra holes in my camper. So I'm going to try to figure out how to condense these wires neatly and get this down a little bit tighter seal it off for the cold nights well I've got some wire ties on here that's a little bit neater now hopefully I can get this door shut somewhat and uh, at least until I build a battery box I need to keep this closed a little I still have a massive gap but hopefully the towel will help on the inside but the intention is to build a battery box here and leave that door open. Hi, this is Troy from the Off Grid Project. Well, didn't uh, get a lot accomplished today. My brake line on my truck blew out up in town the other day. Actually, it was nighttime. And right by the master cylinder, where the high pressure fitting goes into the master cylinder, brake fluid was squirting out between the pipe and the nut that goes in there and nobody had any parts on hand and I was far from home it was night time I had to get home what are you gonna do so I bought some JB weld which most of you all know is a putty material that hardens like steel and I formed it around the leaky spot on the fitting and left it sit for an hour filled up the brake fluid and drove home. I made it. And well, that is uh, very fortunate. It's, it's lucky I made it. It could have gone another way obviously, but I actually spent most of the day today at the mechanic. I took the truck in this morning, 
eight o'clock in the morning, and they uh, they had to cut off the line, reflange it, and uh, put it back in there for me, and they did some other adjustments for me. So anyway, a couple hours later, half my day is gone. Uh, I came home, worked on the new meter for my charge controller, and rewired the whole system a third time, a fourth time. I don't know. Keep rewiring the system. Hopefully, this is it. I've pretty much got all the gauges, meters, measurements, wires, adjustments in there. I've got the heat shrink tubing on my ends of the wires on the connectors, so it should be safe and pretty solid now. And pretty much then uh, that was it for the day. Um, I had a visitor again today. Mad of many things came out. We went in to celebrate my 5,000 subscribers and my 1 million views. So thank you everybody for being there, and uh, you know I wouldn't be here without you guys. So thank you all, and thank you again, man. Many thanks for coming out here. Check out his channel. He's doing a lot of work on the Jeep. Give him a few days. He's he's really busy, but uh, keep checking his channel. He's doing a lot of cool stuff in that Jeep. I saw him. He had a he had a refrigerator. I'm jealous. He's got a fridge in his Jeep running before I got one in my camper. It's small, but he's got a fridge, so I'll give him credit. He's, he's getting a lot done in that Jeep, so uh, check him out.